Hey, uh, welcome back to the channel, and this is my review of New Zealand versus Argentina in the World Cup semi final. A great start for Argentina. They put some really nice phases together early on, and uh, I think about 15 in total. Uh, some nice hard running and a great ball retention, which they've been lacking a little bit so far in this World Cup. And uh, it's looking good for them. New Zealand continue where they left off against Ireland, and that is defending. And uh, they do it well and they look pretty composed. They don't look rattled at all early on, uh, which is a good sign for them. Carreras at uh, 10, uh, he's looking to make something happen and perhaps a little bit of impatience from him. And he puts a grubber through. Um, it's bad timing and not great execution and gives the ball back to New Zealand and they clear their lines. However, from the resulting line out, uh, Argentina do get a penalty and uh, opt to kick for the posts and uh, yeah, they take an early lead 3-0. So a uh, good start from Argentina. It's very physical uh, early on and it's great to see actually. It makes for a very uh, entertaining match in the first 20 minutes or so. But um, the referee uh, intercedes in the match and he basically penalizes uh, Argentina out of the game early on. A um, lot of questionable decisions, I would say. But uh, New Zealand go on to make the most of them, uh, as they're known to do. New Zealand get a good attacking position uh, and uh, drive the line out. And uh, Jason Ryan, his impact on this, uh, this uh, pack cannot be underestimated. They've completely turned around in the last year. And uh, he seems like a really good guy. And uh, he's got this... Uh, New Zealand uh, eight really humming. So um, they're looking pretty good and they have the confidence to take the Argentinians on up front. From that uh, line out, the ball comes out uh, to the midfield and uh, Moanga uh, swings a, a wide pass to Jordan, who's out on the wing and he gets over for an easy first try. And this is the danger that New Zealand pose at the moment, uh, back to their best. Um, first entry into the Argentinian uh, 22 and their first try. So uh, yeah, it uh, looks a little bit ominous for Argentina. They've started really well, but they've already conceded a try. But a timely turnover from the All Blacks and uh, it puts them on the attack and they flow forward and they really look like the, the All Black team of great, uh, of old, when they're going forward here, lots of offloads, uh, great continuity between uh, forwards and backs. And uh, the ball goes uh, to, uh, who is it? One of the players, uh, Barrett, uh, Jordi Barrett, and he, he gets over for a try. And yeah, just a really nice try. One of the best tries of the tournament so far, I think. So at 12-3, there are danger sirens going off, uh, warning signals, whatever you want to say. And Argentina are really going to have to pull their finger out now to, uh, to live with New Zealand. In the set piece, White Lock, who's on like his 100, 190th cap or something like that. He looks like a spring chicken in the in the lineouts and he's doing really well. I know he calls um, the New Zealand ball as well. So he was uh, he had a really good game actually and uh, he upset the Argentinian lineout when it was possible and secured the New Zealand ball. So a great performance from White Lock, uh, the old war horse. So everything is going New Zealand's way and uh, I'd understand if the Argentinians got a bit frustrated at this point. And uh, I, I love Lebanini in the second row, but like <laughs> he's known to have a short temper. And I think like he, his fuse is going to blow first um, if anything is going to happen. So I'm just waiting now for the uh, kind of frustration to blow up. Uh, it never really does, but it was like touch and go uh, for a little bit there. Both teams wanting to play here in the semi-final and uh, keeping the ball in play. And I got to say, it's unbelievable. The first scrum takes place after 30 minutes of play. And that's great for rugby. And uh, yeah, uh, just a fantastic uh, uh, representation of both sides' fitness, particularly New Zealand, who, who came around from a short turnaround. And uh, yeah, they look pretty fresh and they, you know, they're obviously well-conditioned. So. Yeah, the first scrum after 30 minutes, pretty incredible. Fair play to Argentina. They stay on the attack and uh, they get a penalty down in New Zealand's territory. Uh, it's pretty close to the, the um, first half whistle. And I'm thinking like, uh, maybe go for a scrum here. 
they need something before this halftime whistle to just get them back in the match. They opt to kick the points and, uh, you know, hindsight is a beautiful thing. But uh, it's 12-6, but you're just thinking there's a few minutes left now. And uh, they can that mentality of kicking the points and just like, oh, we're going to go into the the second half with, uh, you know, just a small margin between the teams. I think the, the, the mindset, they, they lost an a, a opportunity there. They should have gone a more aggressive route. And uh, yeah, they should have taken like a, like a, a, a scrum, I think, and uh, worked off the scrum and try and got a try. And, uh, you know, they would have been much better served by that. As it is classic New Zealand, they get first a penalty and then a try. Uh, just before the halftime whistle and uh, is, has that killed off the game now. So should Argentina have uh, taken a more aggressive option? I definitely think so. Um, they kicked the penalty, uh, but that leaves like five minutes for uh, New Zealand to attack the Argentinians before the halftime whistle, which they love to do. Uh, first of all, they get a penalty, which puts it 15-6. Uh, and then just uh, as Cheka is going down, looking steam coming out of his ears, as he's walking down to the dressing rooms, um, New Zealand don't let up. Um, Talia breaks up five tackles, I counted five tackles, and uh, gets very close to the Argentinian line. And uh, yeah, and then New Zealand are over. And uh, they go in with now a very convincing lead, uh, 26 into the uh, halftime. What can uh, Argentina produce in the second half? Well, it starts absolutely terribly for them. They they mess up the the uh, kick kick off, and uh, then they get this absolutely destroyed in the scrum. And Aaron Smith, you know, the veteran that he is, smells an opportunity and takes it with a plum, and uh, yeah, gets another try really early into the second half, and uh, twenty seven six and. The game is really done now, to be honest. Um, Argentina conceded at the worst possible moments. And uh, yeah, New Zealand, uh, cutthroat as always. The All Blacks stream forward and they're looking really good. And Frizzell gets over for a try. And Argentina are going to have to dig really deep now just to stop uh, being embarrassed, really, uh, by the scoreline. And uh, it's going to take a lot of work for them to even get some like uh, some pride out of this game. So let's see what they can do. Argentina do attack, but the composure from the New Zealand defense is uh, admirable. And they look very comfortable, to be honest. And they, they bring some subs on. I think it's Mackenzie, Ritalik and Anton Leonard Brown. So a lot of experience there, a lot of flair in, in terms of Mackenzie. So their bench uh, looking pretty good. They didn't really do a lot. Ritalik, I think, is in form, so he played pretty well. But um, yeah, uh, Argent, uh, New Zealand really showing that the, their bench is, is quite strong. Argentina starting to look a little bit worn out now, and I can't really blame them. Uh, the penalties they've conceded in this match has really killed them. Uh, any momentum they had uh, has always been uh, stifled by uh, lack of discipline or the referee's uh, interpretation of the laws. Um, it's Jordan gets another try in his party time for New Zealand. It's 39-6 and you get a, a nice picture of a, a Kano um, in the stands getting boozed you know, in a couple of bottles of beer. So yeah, uh, New Zealand know they're through now and uh, yeah, they just got the eyes on the final now. So an interesting turn of events towards the end of the match uh, with New Zealand cruising basically. Scott Barrett for some reason commits a very cynical foul, knocks the ball out of the scrum half hands and gets a yellow card. Now this is where it gets interesting. Um, uh, after that 10 minutes, Argentina don't really capital capitalize. Uh, New Zealand still looking very comfortable. And uh, but what they do decide to do is when, when the 10 minutes is up, they decide to continue playing with 14 men. Now, this is very interesting. I'm not sure how to interpret this really, but uh, for myself, I'm thinking like it's a warning sign to Barrett. Like, you know, uh, that's how I interpret it. Like, come the final, if he does something stupid like that, because you know, his discipline has been in question before, you know, quite severely in the past, particularly in his um, super rugby appearances um 
you know, he's, he has to understand that his team is going to have to cover for him, you know, in a World Cup final against a team that's much stronger than Argentina. So were, were they sending a signal there to Barrett? I think yes, you know, but maybe it was just like they wanted to rest him. But I don't know. I think there's a little bit something more going on there. But uh, let me know what you think. With 14 men, uh, Will Jordan, who's like been pretty immense in this World Cup, He's got the uh, opportunity to express himself in uh, uh, on the world stage, and he's taken it with both hands. He gets his hat trick uh, with uh, New Zealand at 14 men, and uh, yeah, a very very convincing win, if not a hiding for Argentina. So um, yeah, New Zealand through to the final, uh, very convincing performance. Played the last 20 minutes with 14 men and uh, yeah, look very comfortable doing it. So they're going to take, uh, it's going to take a good side to beat them. So overall, I would say very convincing win for New Zealand. They're starting to get their mojo back a little bit, I think, and uh, proving why they are such a, have such a formid formidable reputation. Um, their, their pack was good. They uh, mixed it up. They they played tight and they they uh, flung it about a little bit when it was necessary. Moanga again gets better every game. Jordan is a constant threat. Just like give him the ball and he can make something happen. Uh, Frizzell is playing well. Adi Savea again Superman. He never seems to have a bad game. And uh, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be a force to reckon with in the final. I think Argentina were a little bit unlucky with some of the refereeing decisions early on, and it just killed their momentum. Uh, plus some uh, bad choice, bad um, yeah, bad choices from the uh, the number ten, Carreras at times. Um, they should have kept the ball in hand more. Just test out the um, the fitness and the fatigue levels of the New Zealanders a little bit more. But uh, there you go, there's always going to be a mountain decline for Argentina and it's no surprise really that uh, New Zealand uh, ran away with it in the end. So uh, thank you for listening to my review. Um, like, subscribe, all the other good stuff and uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next semi-final review. All right, bye-bye.